Hey, what up, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. We've got grades for all your Dodgers shortstops coming up in just a second. But quick reminder for all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. Really helps out the channel. And as always, I'm with your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Give me your grades for your Dodgers shortstops for the 2021 season and try to predict Gavin Lux's 2022 season. Will he be an all-star for the Dodgers? Will the Dodgers trade him? Do you think he'll ever live up to the hype as the Dodgers' former top prospect? Let me know down below in the comments section. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So the grades are in, and we've got report cards for the 2021 Dodgers shortstops. I'm going to distribute your report cards. So first, let's go over the Dodgers grading scale. A equals elite, B equals baller, C equals average, D equals dude, get it together, and F equals hashtag fail. So you we're going to start suck. with Corey Seager. If you don't remember him, he was that shortstop that played for the Dodgers. He won Rookie of the Year. He won the NLCS MVP and World Series MVP in 2020. He's now with the Texas Rangers after signing a 10-year, $325 million contract you know bringing a title back to LA was a huge accomplishment a huge accomplishment oh my goodness but you know I bring my facts to the fight so let's take a deep dive in the numbers and take a closer look at Corey Seager's 2021 season Last season, Corey Seager in 409 plate appearances. He slashed 306, 394, 521, hit 16 home runs, had 57 RBIs, had a 147 WRC plus, had a 3.7 F4. Now, in the postseason, it wasn't the same Corey Seager that we saw in 2020. When he went to God mode in 2020, he was all-time greatness. But last year, it wasn't the case. He slashed 188, 264, 375 had two home runs and six RBIs. So he definitely came down to earth. And of course, he suffered that injury in May where he was hit by a pitch by the Marlins' Ross Detweiler. He broke the fifth metacarpal in his right hand. It forced him to miss 65 games. And up until that point, it really was a so-so season for Corey Seager. Still above average with a 116 WRC+. plus. But through his first 37 games, he was slashing 265, 361, 422, had just four home Home runs in that stretch you saw the K percentage at 17.2 percent the walk percentage at 11.2 percent but we had all expected hey maybe this is the year where he hits 40 dingers and he wasn't on that pace but when he came back from injury he was outstanding he was the best player on the Dodgers when he returned when he returned from injury he slashed 335 417 592 had a 423 Woba a 356 BABIP a 169 WRC plus in his last 240 plate appearances through 58 games and he was fantastic hit 12 home runs had 35 RBIs he really set himself up for a nice big payday in which he got with the Texas Rangers that 10 year 325 million dollar contract but he pretty much was who we thought he was he's a great hitter has that phenomenal hit tool and down the stretch he was one of the best hitters in all of Major League Baseball but unfortunately in the postseason he did come back down to earth so when it comes to Corey Seager he is who we thought he was a great hitter and a subpar defender and that was the case in 2021 so Seager was solid before he went down with the injury and then when he came back he was hotter than the devil's armpit he was fantastic down the stretch in the postseason he struggled he wasn't the same guy that he was in 2020 he did sign that big bag with the Rangers but for his grade for the 2021 season I'm going to give him a B a B for bye Seager bye Corey no I'm going to give him a B for baller the guy is still a baller I call him the human hit tool I wish him well in Texas as long as he's not playing against the Dodgers but I'm giving Seager a B for the 2021 season but it was a little bit of a disappointment there was a lot of talk that maybe he becomes an MVP in the regular season last year maybe he does hit 40 plus home runs that was the talk before but unfortunately like a lot of Corey Seager seasons you have those knickknack injuries this one wasn't his fault he got hit by a pitch but still it just seems to happen with Seager but next we're going to talk about Gavin Lux man what a roller coaster of a season for Luxie now there's one thing that's for sure Gavin Lux 
I think at this point, he's the funniest player on the Dodgers. I'm telling you, Lux's looks are hilarious. The funniest facial expressions on the Dodgers right now. But let's get to the facts on Lux. Let's take a deep dive into his 2021 season. Gavin Lux last season had a 242 batting average, 328 on base percentage, slug 364, had a 303 Woba, a 91 WRC plus, and posted a 1 F4. Now, there was a lot of talk about Gavin Lux getting a runway at second base to start the 2021 season, and he got off to a slow start in April. He slashed 179, 213, 250, had a 463 OPS, went just 10 for 56, had two triples, no doubles and no home runs, but he had a really solid May. In May, he really turned it on. He slashed 286, 346, 490, had an 836 OPS. He had five home runs. He had that big home run against the Mariners with the Dodgers. They were reeling. They had lost 15 in the last 20 games. He has that big three-run shot, helps him win that game. And I really thought that that was going to springboard him for the rest of the season, but that just wasn't the case. He had that hamstring injury. He was placed on the injured list in late July and really you can divide Gavin Lux's season into two parts the first 82 games of the season before he went on the IL he ended up slashing 227 307 349 had an 81 WRC plus you see that strikeout rate at 23.6 percent the walk percentage at 9.9 percent but then he went down to triple a he started playing more outfield and that was necessary for him because the Dodgers of course they traded for trade Turner at the deadline and he took over second base and then Corey Seager he returned from the broken hand injury he went back to shortstop so really the only option for Gavin Lux was to play in the outfield and when he returned he really made a nice impact in his last 20 games of the season Gavin Lux ended up slashing 316 426 439 had a 136 WRC plus had a 373 Woba you saw that strikeout rate go from 23 3.6% in the first 82 games down to 13.2% in the last 20 games. You also saw that walk rate go up to 14.7%. So it looked like the light switch had turned on. And then, of course, he sustained that injury, ran into the wall. And at that point, it almost felt like his season had hit a wall. In the postseason, he ends up slashing 214, 389, 214, hit no home runs, scored a run, had no RBIs. But he did have that clutch base hit against the San Francisco go Giants in game five of the NLDS so that's definitely big for his confidence moving forward now as far as defensively speaking he definitely struggled at the shortstop position had seven errors had zero defensive run saves he was at minus five outs above average and he was just really trying to find himself he was expected to play second base where he definitely was competent but in the outfield struggled and then the shortstop position filling in for Corey Seager while he was out with a broken hand he did his best made some highlight plays but all in all he definitely didn't look like he's a guy that you could consider to be a shortstop for the future, a solution at the shortstop position if you're the Dodgers. Now, if you look at his 2021 MLB percentile rankings, he was in the 61st percentile in average exit velocity, the 43rd percentile in expected Woba, the 13th percentile in barrel percentage, the 66th percentile in whiff percentage, the 13th percentile in outs above average, the 67th percentile in max exit velocity, the 60th second percentile expected batting average the 45th percentile in K percentage he was in the 87th percentile in chase rate which is good the 43rd percentile in hard hit percentage 27th percentile in X slug 73rd percentile in walk percentage and he also showed that elite sprint speed in the 94th percentile now where Gavin Lux really needs to improve is one hitting breaking balls he hit 214 against breaking balls last season and also hitting against left-handed pitching he has struggled mightily against left-handed pitching, even dating back to his Meyer League career. Last season versus right-handed pitching, 283 plate appearances. He slashed 260, 343, 404, had a 281 expected batting average, a 425 X slug, and a 104 WRC+. Had a 20.8 strikeout rate and 
a 10.2 walk rate. Versus left-handed pitching, 98 plate appearances. He slashed 188, 286, 247. Had a 198 expected batting average, a 272 X slug, and a 54 WRC+. plus. That strikeout rate was at 24.5% and his walk rate at 12.2%. So he definitely has to find a way to have more success against Southpaws moving forward. The potential is there for Gavin Lux. I'm not giving up on him. I'm really looking at that last 20 game stretch and hoping that is the Gavin Lux we're going to see in 2022. But all in all, definitely a work in progress for Luxy. So I think the big word for Gavin Lux moving forward is consistency. Can he consistently put together quality at-bats? Can he find a way to have more success against left-handed pitching? I think that is big. And also, what is his role going to be moving forward? Is he going to be a utility man? We're going to see more of him in the outfield because next season, what will the Dodgers do at the shortstop spot? Will they sign Freddie Freeman and shift Max Muncy over to second base? What is going to happen with Trey Turner? Will they add actually consider signing Carlos Correa. So I think his role moving forward is definitely in flux with Gavin Lux. But for last season, I'm going to give him a C. A C for Gavin Lux. And I think that C for next year hopefully stands for consistency. I think he was average when you look at the ups and downs. And I think for Gavin Lux, he's still young. Will he ever live up to that hype? Will he ever be that perennial all-star that we all hoped he would be when he was the game's top prospect? I think that is the big question right now. Doesn't feel like it at the moment. Doesn't mean it won't happen, but I definitely think there were some encouraging signs. I think that big base hit against the Giants, he's going to build confidence from that. So hopefully Gavin Lux, if he's on the Dodgers next season, can take the next step. Now, you also had Chris Taylor. He had 19 stars, 23 appearances, 153 and two-thirds innings at the shortstop spot. We covered him already. And then Trey Turner, three starts, three appearances, 24 innings. We also included him with the second baseman. But let me know down below in the comment section what grades would you give Corey Seager and Gavin Lux for last season? Let me know down below. And will Gavin Lux live up to the hype? Do you want to see the Dodgers trading for a starting pitcher? What role do you want to see him have moving forward? Let me know down below. My name is DMAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.